Crypto regulation is coming. Welcome to the Crypto Mastery Class. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl. We've got Joe on the line. He is the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators. And we are here to make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. We're going to look over the news, some overall markets, the hot movers in our basket, some indicators, and most importantly, go over questions and answers. So please ask questions. Quick disclaimer, this is opinions expressed here. It's not investment advice. We are in week number 50 of 2022. And F. SB plans to release crypto regulation guidelines for 2023. This is an article by Godfrey Benjamin and it's on the coinrise.com. So there's a global financial international organization now. It's called the Financial Stability Board, FSB. No, it's not FTX. <laughs> That's the talk of the town. It's Financial Stability Board. It has announced plans to roll out guidelines for crypto, re crypto regulation in 2023. According to the outgoing Secretary General of the Financial Stability Board, Dietrich Damansky, the events that have taken place recently have exposed the need to address the risks involved in the crypto sphere. Many industry players have criticized global policymakers for failing to fill the regulatory vacuum allowing crypto firms like FTX to misappropriate customer deposits. Regionally, crypto regulations have tried to come up with a regulatory framework which will guide the ecosystem in their jurisdiction. Sorry about it, jurisdiction. In the European Union, the EU, regulators have come up with the Markets in Crypto Assets, MICA, which is believed to possess the capacity to mitigate the effect of future implosions. Yet to be fully operational, MICA has received the support of the Parliament through votes. Demansky stated that this guideline for crypto regulation, which would be rolled out next year, is aimed at putting crypto projects to the same standards as banks. It's pretty exciting. If they provide the same service that banks provide. He mentioned that many crypto market participants argue that authorities are hostile to innovation. I would say so far authorities have been fairly accommodating. The Secretary General also mentioned that there would be no need to waste time in launching these regulations. I don't think that we would be talking about a decade, he said, adding that any extra rate would be way too long. Next on the news today is a Bitcoin price prediction as U.S. inflation CPI data is released. Bitcoin to the moon? This is by Ali B on the CryptoNews.com. So the Bitcoin price prediction has turned bullish with Bitcoin surging more than 5% to the $18,000 level following the release of the lower than expected U.S. consumer price index figures. Inflation in the United States slowed to 0.1% from 0.4% in October, a positive development for the Federal Reserve's efforts to rein in the economy's runaway cost of living. The report boosted cryptocurrency prices in hopes that the Federal Reserve will slow the pace of interest rate hikes in light of the less than scary consumer price increases it revealed. The U.S. analysts had predicted an annual increase of 7.3% for the CPI, but Tuesday's report from the Labor Department showed an increase of 7.1%. Given the weaker than expected CPI figures, Bitcoin has risen on speculation that the Fed may reconsider rising interest rates tomorrow. The number of users holding between 10 to 1,000 Bitcoin has recently increased significantly. Bitcoin also experienced significant volatility, owning primarily, owing primarily to recent events. 
retail investors continue to buy Bitcoin with 3 million already in possession while whale accumulation is declining. Santiment, a market intelligence platform, tweeted on December 11th about a significant increase in the number of Bitcoin addresses holding 10 to 1,000 Bitcoin. According to statistics, the number of addresses increased to around 151,000, a level last seen in 2020. In related news, Glassnode alerts, a blockchain intelligence platform reported that the total number of Bitcoin addresses holding one or more Bitcoin had surpassed 964,608. So this is the tweet from Santiment. He says there are now 151,080 addresses that hold between 10 to 1,000 Bitcoin. After a massive decline that began in December 22, 2020, these addresses have increased significantly throughout 2022 as Bitcoin has progress progressively become more affordable. Despite the collapse in the price of numerous coins in 2022, New York City Mayor Eric Adams has reportedly maintained a campaign pledge to transform the city into a crypto hub. Adams stated in December 12th slate post, that he still wants New York City to be the center of cryptocurrency industry. As he promised during his mayoral campaign in November, 2021. According to reports in January and February, the mayor of New York converted his first three paychecks while in office into Bitcoin and Ether. Mayor Adams wants to see New York thrive in terms of innovation and economic growth and he believes that cryptocurrency, blockchain, and other cutting-edge technology provide tremendous opportunities for both. I thought that was a pretty good article. What do you guys think about that? All right, so here's our overall market, a Bitcoin and Ethereum market cap. So currently, we're at $872 billion of all the money in crypto land. And I wanted to draw your attention to that little, little dip that just happened on December 11th at noon. Suddenly a 72, almost like a $72 billion drop within like a 24 hour period. And it went right back up. So don't know what caused that little dip, but I thought that was a pretty interesting little tidbit to share with you guys. So $72 billion fluctuation. So I, I like how they just said in those articles that whales are not necessarily jumping into crypto immediately, but we saw the article last week that Goldman Sachs is planning on putting tens of millions of dollars in. Um, they didn't say billions, but somebody um, is definitely got the billions under their control and is already in the market with that kind of a fluctuation, $72 billion. I don't think that that's just an average Joe making that kind of a wave in the market. All right, so now we have the seven day performance heat map in market cap block size. So you can see Bitcoin is still the king and Ether is still the queen. Bitcoin went up 4.87% in the last seven days, and Ethereum went up 5.3% in the last seven days. It's a great combination of multiple colors on this chart. So the dark green means, the darkest means three steps up. So T-O-N on the lower right hand area, it looks like that is a dark green. But then you have Ethereum representing the, the mid grade green, the, the second step up and Bitcoin, the first light green, the first step up. Ripple has a little bit of light green, Maddox, Stealth and Rat Bitcoin. Other than that, you see, um, you see a lot of red right now in the stable coins. So USDC is stable. That means it's supposed to be a dollar USDT and BNB. It's not a stable coin, but what it is is it's where people do tend to perch their profits. And so with those stable coins showing red, including BUSD, it's most likely that people are selling their stable coin and getting back into the market. So let's hang tight and kind of see where that goes in the next. Um, in the next hour, we'll just kind of go through the charts and kind of see where the money's going. 
We also have crypto bubbles. This is another great place for my visual learners to jump into. And this is showing you a one week performance in market cap bubble size. So you have, again, Bitcoin is the king. And with this scenario, it says Bitcoin went at 4.6%, Ethereum went at 5.5%. And you can see the same thing is being reflected here too, showing that you have the stable coins in the red, the red bubbles, showing that it's things are going down in their market cap. Ripple looks like it's at 0.9%. Um, Hex is at 0.5%, and AVAX is up 1.7%. It's very helpful if you want to invest in coins that are of larger market caps. So you would look for the larger block size on the heat map or the larger bubble size on the crypto bubbles. So we're gonna review some indicators now, live on some charts. If you need to subscribe to the indicators, you could go to cryptomastery.online. Here's Bitcoin. This is the USD one week performance chart with the Crypto Mastery indicators. So on the top area, we have Bitcoin, each candlestick, represents one week so it's the average of what's happening in a week and you have the early reversal that's still in the downward direction and the average true range that is well actually i apologize the early reversal hasn't really come in for a long time so it is still following the last one i suppose of going down but the average true range is still in the downward direction and it's a it's a beautiful place for Bitcoin to be if you're in the acquisition mode. So in an overall perspective, I would say it's like the super sale when you go get clothes and it's on the discount rack in the back of the store, off season clothes. So uh, it's not going to last forever. So it's one of those things that you really have to kind of gauge your risk assessment and and your risk tolerance to know. Is this something that you could afford to take a risk on right now? Because if you could, it's probably pretty exciting. I'm going to go down and tell you why I feel this way. So you have the trend indicator where it, it did, um, it began earlier where you have the key, but then it just didn't, the, the momentum of the upward direction wasn't strong enough until weeks later, then you get the bell, the one, the two, and then you had the pause. You know, there's no other numbers that were coming in. The force, there was a resistance in the force of the price going up. And then in the last two weeks, you could see that the trend indicator registered a three and then it popped out a four. So there's small movements. You can see those candlesticks are not really thick and tall. And it's it's been a slow moving um it's it's just is what it is. It's just slow. It's just not gonna, it's not a fast movement right now. So then you also have the radar, and that indicator is showing you that for the one hour, the 60 minutes average, it's going down. But the beautiful part about what you're seeing here is that the four hour average is up, the day is up, and the week is up. So could we have enough momentum to help this? move up a significant amount so we'll see now the signal line is tight okay it's still green it shows it's moving up but it's close and so what that says is that you cannot go into bitcoin right now thinking absolutely it's gonna go straight straight up forever and ever you need the distance between that gold line and that green line to show that you have some like definite direction strength the trend strength indicator came in with a green arrow. That is the best sign ever, okay? That's like an early, it's almost as, as strong as the early reversal, if not bigger than that. So that is a really good sign, okay? The trend strength indicators come in. Now, my favorite part about this chart as far as like acquisition at a low position is that we're at a 5.371 week volatility index. That is almost unheard of in the last five years. So if I was to shrink this chart up and tighten it up to see when the last time we had such a low volatility index, it had to be probably five years ago, a long time ago. So 
That volatility index, what that stands for is it's oversold. And with that being said, it also, in my perspective, it means you have a whole ceiling to acquire profits with. Meaning, if you go to that red zone with your eyes and you look to the green zone above, you have all that room to grow. So it's like you're starting with a seed and then you can let that tree, that evergreen tree, grow to the ceiling of that um, of that greenhouse. You have the whole ceiling of growth potential. So that's why I'm super excited about Bitcoin, okay? The top indicators are phenomenal and they're really good to help you understand like when to hold them, when to fold them. But at this point, what I see with the biggest takeaway from this chart with Bitcoin is that volatility index is telling me, Susie, that is super low and this is like an acquisition stage. It's just that all, all signs are not moving forward um like i'm still meaning I'm, I'm still waiting to have like absolute assurance that my investment if i was to invest today that it would grow today i can't guarantee myself that because the average tree range is not in line and the early reversal is not in line and the trend strength in my perspective is not super excitingly strong those candlesticks are not like moving forward fast but that volatility index is perfect all right so we're going to jump now into Ethereum. And one thing we have going for Ethereum, guys, do you see that early reversal? A little thin green line is a very, very, very exciting sign. So that means that Ethereum may have hit a floor. All right. Now, we still have in those top two indicators, the average true range is still going down, all right? So we need to surpass that red zone on the right-hand side, the 1,995. That's what that little red highlighted number means. That's the top of the average true range, that thick red line. Once Ethereum passes that point, then that average true range will be in an upward trajectory, in an average true range, in an upward movement, all right? So that's your target that you're going for for the average tree range to flip to green. But the early reversal came in, so we have a good chance. Oh, sorry of that happening. Okay, now in the trend, you have a six that came in, but you could see the underlining line in that trend indicator is red. So we still have some, there was some trouble, all right? So it's not, it, not this like full fledge ahead upward right now, this moment. But let's get past today. And remember, this is a one week performance chart. So this is showing you a week. So last week is when that in that early reversal came in. Okay. The signal line is tight, just like Bitcoin is. Okay. So it's tight. So either way. But what is a good sign is below that signal line, you have the TSI, which is the trend strength indicator that the green arrow came in. Okay, so we've got the signal line is still green. It's hanging in there. The trend strength indicator came in. The early reversal indicator came in. The trend did, it spit out a number, so it spit out a six. So we got to see if the key comes in again and then the bell. The radar, just like Bitcoin, is saying for the four-hour average up, the day up, and the week up. And, you know, I was talking to you guys about how excited I am about the volatility index of Bitcoin being down to a five. So notice Ethereum is not at a five. It's at a 12. These two will not stay in this volatility index level very very long okay so if we have flipped the switch and if we are going a little bit for some time you know what goes up comes down so don't get too excited here but uh that's not gonna stay that low long you're gonna say oh why didn't i get it then but um you know you, you gotta have some you gotta have you gotta 
have a lot of stamina in order to to jump in on something when all signs are not moving upward. But on Ethereum, we do have one, two, three, four. We've got about five indicators. I'll, I'm just going to say that that radar is, is looking up too. So there's about five indicators showing that Ethereum is going to move in an upward direction. So, you know, you got to get low and then sell high. So that's the name of the game. So in our basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. This is a picture of our Crypto Mastery Basket inside of our Trading View account. And so far, Phantom is winning the challenge of the day. It's up 4.58%. Ethereum's up 3%. Link is up 3%. Solana is up 3%. Bitcoin USD is up 3%. Litecoin's up 2%. Cardano is up 2%, Atom's up 2%, Algo's up 1%, and Harmony is down 1%. So we're going to look at the crypto screener now. So this is the TradingView crypto screener, and it's sorted by strong buy. It's not financial advice. It's just where we go to find something to see if how... How it's progressing, is this something that we want to get into? But we look at the deep dive of the crypto mastery indica indicators applied to the charts. So we'll use this to kind of mine for what is um, a potential really good buy right now. So according to the TradingView crypto screener technical rating, they're saying that CB, CBETH USD is a strong buy. MXC, um, Optimism, Dex Tools, DeFi Yield Protocol, Polygon, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Payer, iExec, RLC. And I'm not mentioning the stable coins. So I'm not mentioning. Tether, you know, we're not going to invest in stable coins, but those just pop up because it's just part of part of crypto optimism. So we'll jump into the live charts and look at those on the live trading view account. So we're going to use the crypto mastery dot online indicators now. So if you don't have them yet, just subscribe to the URL above. And this is when we will get onto the live chart. And let's see what we have going on. If you guys have questions, please put them in the questions box. We are here to help you understand everything. And it's most important to tell me what you don't understand. All right. So right now you see my chart and it's showing um, Crypto Mastery Basket. And then we have the Crypto Pairs. So I'm going to first kind of go through, and um, hopefully Joe will jump on. I'll go through the uh, the Crypto Mastery Basket first, kind of show you guys what's going on with those. Hey, Joe, hi, how are you? Hi, hi, everyone. How's it going? Great. It's good to have you here. So, Joe, do you, are you okay if we go through the Crypto Mastery Basket and look at these coins to see where they're at? Look, that's a great idea. Let's do it. All right, jump in any time. So we got the early reversal on Phantom uh, FTM coming in right here, and that was on November 22nd. Well, November 28th, sorry. And then we had, so I'm just going to put some check marks. Jump in and tell me, like, you know, if you see anything that they should know about, um, or if you want to kind of, if anybody needs any additional information about these indicators, if you have questions, it's time to ask Joe while we've got the creator on the line. Yeah, like what, what we want to do first is is that um, we want to tighten the chart up so there's a little bit more depth to it. Is that good? Yeah, yeah, like that. And uh, pretty much, you know, um, 
the market could be uh the market the oscillator t s i is trending up higher okay and um the conditions are all there so right now this is something that's in trend mode in trend mode right but I, I wanted to take a look at something else here if you go in there and if you go to the uh link right and change it to a daily all right i just wanted to pull this out right here and i call your attention to that eri print right now this is a little different because you know there's some checks but then there isn't checks so we want to put the check for the eri because that's our early reversal indicator and then what we want to do is just put waiting for. So we're waiting for the TSI to go with a green dot. And we're waiting for a cross of the signal line. Oh my, <laughs> this is not going to be waiting for, <laughs> we're waiting for the key guys. First you have the key and then you're going to have the bell. So you're waiting for the key and the bell right there. I'm going to say something about the volatility index. So it's right there at 31. So I'm telling you guys, it's very rare to have something so low, like into this zone. So this is technically out of the red zone. And you can see the reflection of that right here on the candlestick color. It's black. So when the candlestick color is black, it's because the volatility index is in the let the cake bake zone is what we call it. And when this actually reaches beyond $7.78, this area, then that's when the average true range will flip to green. The beautiful part about this is that these right here are Keltner bands, and it, they're almost like stopping points. Like, okay, all aboard. And then it, usually what happens is this will be the first place to stop. And then here's your second. And then once this actually gets past this point, the next place it most likely would stop is right here at 736. But if it gets really good and things keep moving upward and it goes past the red, then we flip to the green zone. So here's the thing. If you're in this to win this just this week, then you want to have the right expectations too where you would say, great, well, then I should probably stop right here because that's pretty much my next stopping point. It's like a train. It's like all aboard, first stop, second stop. Or if you're down here and you're getting on that train, all aboard, first stop, second stop, third stop. If you get to this fourth stop, then it's really good, but you better, if, if you want profit, if you don't take profit from here, someone else is going to take it for you. Guarantee. <laughs> I hate to say that. That's kind of the way it works. All right. So that was my third one on my list, Joe. Um, and I'm, oh, I'm trying to. Sorry. I'm trying to pull back. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So ahead of. Well, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. No, well, well, so I was just, and also I'm looking at the one weeks because I just love these larger income producers. <laughs> I'm so ready to make way more than like 10%, you know? 
And I just feel like if I go back to like a longer time frame, then I'm going to be able to get a bigger bang for my buck. Um, so I'm pulling back to the one week, but I noticed that you pulled me into a one day chart. So how do you feel about the time differences on those? Look, I, I think it's good to look at the, uh, you know, the weekly. In this case point, the weekly is good, but also, like, if you change this chart to a daily, let's just talk about something in here, which is good. And then let's just talk about something which would be bad, right? So right now in here on the TSI, we have a check. So let's get out our check and let's talk about the good stuff. So okay. we have a, a check because we have another bell print. And basically on the trend indicator, um, this is an additional confirmation that the market is trending higher. And as long as we see the green bars, we're okay. All right. And the signal line is trending up higher. So we have another check. We're okay. And the same thing with the TSI. Now, this is a case point where the volatility index is really stuck. So we're not going to really see that make a move. Um, but what I want to talk about here, Susie, is like, you know, let's just say, um, talk about uh, what happens for us to exit, right? So like if you were to put down the top uh, three reasons to exit out of this trade, and we can put one reason being we stop getting green, the green color on the trend line, on the trend indicator. So if the color bars change white, let's say that was number one, if you could um, just type that in there. Yeah, because it's just as important when getting in and also when to get out. And just some of the things I want to just highlight in here for someone that may be new and, and maybe in this trade. Um, it's great that the market is trending, but we really never can trust the market. So a lot of times that like, we scale in and scale out of position. So number one would be it, when to get out, the first color bars turn white. Okay. Number two would be on the signal line if it crosses. So you want to put that down there for the signal line. When the signal line crosses, this is another reason to get out. You know, I'm going to say goes red and crosses. I'll, I'll just put both. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a color signal, guys. It's, it's going to be a color change signal. So there's two things. You know, you'll, you'll visually see a color change, but it's also uh, on a technical basis, like if you were programming the system, it would say on a cross, which means like, this is a cross right here. But you'll see a visual color change, which is red is down, green is up. So it's quite simple. Yeah, and, and like Susie, if you take that arrow, right, and, um, yeah, and which just one? point it to that, uh, well, the arrow on the left-hand side, it's like a tool. Yeah, but where do you want me to put it? I just want you to just point it right at that dot on the signal line. Like if oh. you notice when it crosses, it, it right shows here. that dot. So for somebody new, you when it when you have your official cross, that's when you it shows the dot. So on the move down in November, this is like the second week of November, we got the red dot, which was the move down. And then now we got the green dot, which is the move up. And if we get the next red dot, this is a this is a reason uh, a good reason to scale out position. I mean, you don't have to go completely flat because you could be in this for the long term, but um, you know it's always good to scale out and scale scale in and scale out appropriate with your account size. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely feel so at peace right now just because I moved my portfolio with the news and with the indicators and the charts 
So I think that a lot of people, my friends are so funny. They're like, oh my gosh, there's a guy, he got arrested. And I'm just like, yeah, it's okay. Because I think, because I'm on top of my portfolio. I think a lot of people, they they get a 401k mindset that they're just going to hold it for like a million years. But once you get into this and you're actually using the indicators, there's no fear anymore. It's like you're, it's, it's a very kind of boring, complacent situation because it's just like, yeah, well, I follow my chart. I'm fine. <laughs> I, you know, I, does that make sense, Joe? Like, you don't get upset about the market at all. It's a very calm, soothing kind of situation because you, you see the numbers. You know what to do. Well, what's, what's happening is, is that you're being empowered by knowledge. It's the yeah, same it's way that if I was an electrician, right, you know, you know, if I came to your house and I opened up the circuit breaker, that's pretty scary stuff. Like my life can be taken away <laughs> from me instantly yeah. if I touch the wrong cable or if I remove the wrong um, circuit. So you, you go to school and you acquire an education. And now you become empowered. Empowered meaning is that now you're courageous enough to open up the circle breaker door and you're courageous enough to have faith in the education you acquired. And now you're able to remove the circuit and replace with the new circuit all within one task. And it's the same thing in here with trading. You have to let the education empower you. And what we're pointing out today is is the what if scenarios. So we got one more Susie and we're done this, which is number three, the TSI red dot. And this one here I always use because I love the TSI. When the red dot shows on this TSI, that's the third reason to get out or, you know, scale out of position. So for right now in, in the short term, the market is trending higher. So, um, you know, I, I do have a level that I'm looking at, Susie, right, that we're going to talk about when you get done this. And it's going to be questionable whether or not the market stays above that level. So if it stays above that level, I'm 100% bullish. Um, onward we go to break 16. Um, but if in the event that we don't stay above this level, and if one of these case points show, I will be getting out. And, and this may happen before we talk next week because who knows what's going to happen. Tomorrow's a, a meeting on the Federal Reserve. And uh, these meetings on rates and interest rates, they change the dynamics of the market instantaneously. Okay. So, all right. So let's take a look at this again, see how it looks. All right. So now you see up there, Susie, the upper end of the ATR, right, which comes in, I believe, at about, uh, yeah, right there. 1,000. Right? So you want, yeah, so what you want to do is just take a horizontal line and put it right across that. Okay. Yeah. And then what you want to do is, is type in needs to close above this price, which is 1365. So I've seen this before. If if this is a possible reversal, it'll go up there, break the ATR, and it'll reverse. And if that is the case point, um, it may reverse and test the old lows. But if we do get a close above this, then this could be in here, maybe whatever, what we all been waiting for. And which is any signs, the beginning signs of life to this bull market. So, yeah, very important. You know, I like to talk about uh, um, just the things in there because the, these Federal Reserve, the meeting on the Federal Reserve, these guys meet once a month, Susie. And, they, you know, these guys go to Harvard. And they're highly educated, much more educated than me. And 
what they do is is that they look at the different status of the economy and they make the decision for all of us are on, they on what needs to be done balance our economy or do they have underlining reasonings out and industries that they're trying to support other, more than others like what is their ultimate uh, look the federal reserve ultimately they their aim is to create stability and they do that by any means necessary okay and right now the way they're doing it is by moving interest rates so like if you got a car payment if you got a mortgage right you know if you um, have anything credit that you borrowed against your cell phone then most likely that interest rate is going up higher and that's a reflection of what the Federal Reserve has been doing and until they stop tightening because they're doing this because this they believe this is the way to stop inflation so at some point the market should bottom out with all this tightening but there's no signs of that right now so if they go another 50 points tomorrow you know I caramba you know <laughs> well, tell us what's going to happen if they do that um, what do you think is going to happen well, it, it's not so much um, I don't want to sound like a fundamentalist and then say well if they do this um, the market has to react this way okay price moves first and price is always right so what I'm looking at is where the market closes at I'm looking at the closing price and uh, the closing price on this daily, on how things um, evolve over the next couple of days, will tell me in here which which way the market is going. So, like if you go back to um, the other show where we see the other chart overlays display, right? In the event the market closes above six, 1364, okay, we proceed up higher onward. To 1600. I, I love to see this market put a new high end. But there's always the what if situation. And the what if is, is that if she doesn't close above 1364 but, but breaks the ATR, well, then if, if that TSI goes red, you know, it may be finito for short term, you know, because the TSI. And the signal line can both cross at the same day, and the trend can go and stop painting color that day. All three of them can just shut off in one day, and then now that's it. The trend is down. So, you know, we got to let the market tell us where it's going, but it, it's important to look at what we're looking for to get out for someone that's new so that that way you can prepare yourself and help set the right expectation when you're sailing the ship. Yeah, I think there's some fundamentals we should discuss too, because it, it, depending on like people that are here that are new or if they're seasoned, we're looking at the second largest market cap coin right now. Meaning, like of all the money in crypto land, most of all the money is invested in Bitcoin. It's at about a 38% of all the money in crypto land is in, in Bitcoin, and then Ethereum is probably sitting around an 18% overall money. Now. The biggest thing that I think that if you were to do some sideline research is infrastructure. Um, what I've noticed in the last five to six years of being in the industry is that this is an underlining technology and no matter what happens with an FTX or an exchange going down, an exchange is just like a store. It's like, okay, there was a store and it was selling stuff and it wasn't, you know, it had bad ethics or it just had bad money management that's just a store that doesn't impact the technology that you're utilizing right now like the ripple technology it will replace swift technology which is what banks use to transfer money and it's about a 30 dollar charge to transfer money from bank account to bank account but ripple replaces that so when you're choosing on what to invest in and this can't be financial advice because i'm not a financial advisor but you know, when you're choosing what's what's your long-term holds or your percentages or your risk assessments and you're managing your own portfolio, 
I highly recommend that you you look at some some fundamentals, but mostly the underlining technology and what the advantages are and the use case scenarios of those. And just to know that you have coins that are coins that are actually utilized to buy and sell things, but then you have infrastructures, you have technology that actually has a really, really important use case scenario. So that article where you said, where I, I mentioned how the mayor of New York wants New York to be a, uh, a hub of crypto, there's multiple use case scenarios of crypto. This is not just black and white. This is not money. This is so many things that it's doing and a way to kind of communicate on a global perspective and have basically global access to like no matter what government is there or not there with the blockchain technology. It's, it's just amazing. So I'd like Joe to, for us to eventually look at multiple scenarios of you know, new coins or new technology that is just hitting the market and just now emerging because that's where you're going to see this crazy growth soon once this regulation global regulation comes in and it hopefully that won't hinder growth but actually support it i think you may see some absolutely stunning skyrocketing situations like what happened in 2017 and 2008 well before the crash of 2018 Things were going so fast and it was like just normal to just five times your money in like a few days <laughs> or ICO and stuff. So I just want to put that out there, guys, because we're, we're looking at charts and we're not really talking about what they are, what they stand for. And we're looking at more like high market cap coins and stuff. So there are things out there that are new projects that you may want to check out. But this technology as long as it has, Joe, that's something we should discuss too, because I'm talking about potentially like new technology or finding some something that's going to last the test of time. But can you explain to them when you find a product that's new in the market and how you need to have enough time to get this data? Like... Meaning well, I mean, it, the the thing is, is that uh, some of these coins, right, they're new onto the market. So when you populate the uh, chart overlays, you might not be getting a full overview. Yeah, right? I'm trying to but, find but let's, yeah, but, but let's say in particular, right, let's take a look at this uh, Solana. I just want to just show a couple things in here because the time is running on us. Okay, Solana. Sure. Uh, are we, are we on? Yeah, we went. Did we do link? I think we did. Yeah, we looked at link. Here's Solana. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What I what I wanted to point out is 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 that we got the ERI, which showed today, right? And then now, um, if you notice, the TSI is still red. So you know, it, this is another thing where I wanted to kind of talk about, uh, you know, what we're looking for. Right, because it's similar to kind of how the Ethereum is. Is that right now the market is in this tight little channel, and you know, from this channel the market is going to make a move. So right now, what's good about this is, is is that um, we got the ERI today, so that's showing us that the move could be potentially up. So what we're looking for is on the bottom on the volatility index we're looking for the volatility index to move up out of the 20. so if you could um, type that on there susie yeah So I want to make sure they don't get confused with this. This is like my most favorite place to buy. So what Joe is saying is that when it gets out, 
you sell when you're up here. So when he says he wants it to move out of the under 20 zone, that meaning assuming that you're getting it when it's down here. Do you want to just confirm that, Joe? Well, yeah. I mean, basically, is that 20 below the 20 is an extreme zone, right? So it's generally a clue that uh, which way the market is favoring for when the trend starts. Being that the volatility index is in the 20, this is a clue which lets us know that it could be potentially a move to the upside from which the market is going. Yeah. So here's a great example right here, guys. So you buy when it's down here in the red zone, and then you sell up here. So I'm just going to say this is the take profit zone. What do I always say, guys? If you don't take profit, someone's going to take your profit for you. <laughs> I hate to say it and be like the the bear of bad news, but that's pretty much it, guys. <laughs> what do you say, Joe? Is there any other thing do you need to explain about this? Uh, take not emphasize enough that you've got to take profit. Look, if you don't take take a profit, the market will, uh, I'll, I'll take the opportunity back. So, you know, there's been so many times, like, I didn't take a profit. Like, I'm human like everyone else, right? You know, like, I'm in my human form. I'm in, <laughs> so the thing is, is I make mistakes. And uh, one of my biggest mistakes is, honestly, is that sometimes I don't take profits. Like, I, I get, uh, you know, I get, uh, what's that word? You know, I get... Um, Big headed, you know, like I just won the trade, like I'm a big shot, you know, like I created this great program, I just make great trade and and then um I take for granted that all my trades are gonna be like that. <laughs> uh, when I started you no, know, I was like, Oh, unicorns and butterflies and the world is amazing and, and everything is gonna keep growing like a green like uh um like a green bean, but let me tell you guys, even a green bean, even though they have the these green beans that just they're in determinant, I mean, like they keep growing. There's a season and it stops, and no matter what, like it'll stop going because the cold weather comes. So even in growing vegetables and fruit, it's a stopping point. And so, as you can see historically, there's always an end to the growth. And then it goes down and it starts again. It, it's it's just like music, <laughs> literally. But the more you look at this technology and you see and you look at the patterns, then you're going to say, okay, okay. I have to accept that I have grown to a point and any, if I do not take profit in the green zone, then by God, I better be ready for the fall of a century. You know, I got to be ready for this kind of a fall. So I'm not quite certain if the ruler works in this zone, but ugh, yeah, there you go. You're going to 94% off. Like, yeah, okay. If you're going to be okay with that, then then you just be okay with losing like 94% of your money. <laughs> it, 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 you know, Susie, you know, if you, um, if you look at those dates and if you go back to the chart, right? Okay. And we, and we look at those dates on the chart. Oh, it's so much. Right. I mean, like, um, you have you have to blow the chart up because I, I believe where, where were you at in September or November? Uh, I know, right? It was like well, right around. I guess we could probably just go with these right here, where this it, is the all time. Well, if you if you just go to like the last recent one, go in November, the beginning of November. Okay. Oh. To the right. Whoa. I should. Right. I. Yeah, like I just want to point out is is that like it usually jumps out of this oh right there. Like if you look at the twenty fourth, it was similar it's kind of like the same similar setup, right? On the on the twenty fourth of October. Uh, okay, so if okay. you put a vertical line there. Yeah. Okay. It was kind of like a similar uh, case point because we got the ERI. Right, and once we got the ERI, 
And that's when, you know, we got the signal line, we got the trend indicator, we got the TSI, we got the volatility. Everything went yeah. yes. all yes, right? And that helped give it enough momentum to break the ATR. Yeah. Now is a similar case point. Okay, so what we want to do is just type in there. We're waiting for the green dot on the TSI. Oh, you want me to in today in today's land? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. exactly. Because because it's similar. So this is what we're waiting for. It's a similar setup. Okay. The only thing we need to really make this thing work right now is this TSI and the trend indicator. And we're in a one day chart rating. I'm going to call it green arrow, but I just did a green dot. Solana kind of got caught in the midst of this whole FTX thing somehow, some way. So it could be a really good movement um, because it could be on super sale right now because of the FTX debacle. It you know, scared a lot of people out of it. Okay. So that's the only thing we're waiting on then, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, uh, you know, that uh, definitely, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and so, and then the other thing is that if you take the uh, trend indicator, okay, if you want to type in there, you know, if, okay, uh, or when the trend starts, that's a better way. When the trend starts, look for the numbers, because what will happen is the numbers will start to confirm the higher highs. the biggest thing too is that you got to set the stage for like your sell so the other thing is just when you buy it you can set the sell immediately so if you also I feel like you know if you're getting it the beautiful thing is that one these are all red so that means the volatility index is still an oversold absolutely beautiful scene but use these Kautner bands to your advantages so if, if you do scoop it up right here then I don't see a problem at whatsoever is to go ahead and set your sell for that top Keltner band. So if you're buying it at today's price, 1359, set the sell for 1501. And, you know, that's not like a huge amount of, of profit, but it's something. And then if you feel like you want to hang tight and see if it goes past the average true range, then you would, Set it to sell at 1584. If you're feeling really advantageous, then you can set it to sell a little bit higher. And then if you're sleeping and one of those candlestick jumps happens where it's just like doink way beyond the counter band, bam, you just want to profit. So, Joe, do you have anything you want to recommend to them for like setting their sell right at their buy? If they buy, and then when you go in with a buy, have your sell ready. But how do you well, do yeah. Well, uh, well, look, the placing limits is going to vary depending on which exchange you're with. But overall, you know, what we're talking about is having a plan to exit. And, uh, you know, having a plan to exit is just as important as having a plan to enter into the trade. So, you know, it's kind of like the yin and the yang. They're complementary to each other. And you really need to have an exit plan the same way. But when you initiate the trade, uh, what, ki what kind of trade is this? Is this a swing trade or is this a long-term trade? If it's a long-term trade that you're looking to accumulate for a period of a couple of weeks or months, well, you know, um, that's, you don't have to be as, um, you, you know, you, you don't have to be as aggressive. But if it's a, more of a short-term swing to what you're doing, well, then you want to, you know, pay attention to the different clues so that you can um, scale yourself in and out accordingly. 
Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people, they just don't have much time on their hands to just fiddle faddle with this and they just want to automate it. But, you know, you can automate it yourself. You can buy and then you can immediately set it to sell. And I would, this is what I use is the Keltner bands for the correct expectations of a sell. And if you have all your indicators aligned in the upward trajectory, and then you have those Keltner bands right here, it just makes sense. I mean, and the realistic is, is just like we have those, um, the heat map with those three colors. Think about that. The three shades of green and the three shades of red. There's a reason why there's three. There's probably a reason why there's three lines in the Keltner band. So one, two, three. And bam, bam. So we saw Ethereum is a was a mid-green today and Bitcoin was a... Um, a, a light green so it was probably this one two like you know here's the first band right here so you can see that Solana's already surpassed the first Keltner band it got to that point and now the next challenge is will it surpass the second Keltner band so that would be considered you know it hit it's most likely past the light green stage it's going towards the mid green and then the dark green and when you get to the dark green someone's going to take profit and then if it's super, super moving forward, then that's more. All right, it's 102. Oh, we passed the hours. All right, guys. But hopefully through this, you'll understand no matter what chart you're looking at, you can know how to utilize the, um, the indicators to the best of your ability, no matter what you're looking at. They're all um, – indicators are indicators. They're, they're all going to be the same. It's just different processes. Anything else you want to say to everybody, Joe? Um, uh, let's um, well, well, just basically, Susie, if you change that to a Bitcoin and just change it to a daily real quick, just to you know finish out here. Sure. Just what I'm looking for tomorrow is it's similar in here to really the uh, Ethereum, and, and if you shrink the, the chart up a little bit, um, um, yeah, a little bit more depth. I just want to just point out the last time it broke the ATR was uh, October 24th. And right now, if you look at the ATR, the ATR comes up there right at about 1800. So you want to take a horizontal line and draw it right there at 18. That's going to be really the big number that um, we really need to close above um, to get more really optimistic on this. Um, and uh, if we get a close above that, that's great. Now, let's talk about the what if situation and let's do this exactly like we did the Ethereum. Okay. Um, what if um, the market doesn't close above that or if it breaks it and has a sharp reverse? What we're looking for to maybe possibly scale out of our positions. So we'd be looking for the color green to stop. On the trend indicator, that right there is a clue. We'd be looking for a cross in the signal line. I'm just going to label this when to get out. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and it's good to have that because you know what? Sometimes we can get caught in the moment and we just, you, you, you know, you don't know what the market could do and you just need to be ready for the unexpected. You know, if the unexpected happens, if it doesn't happen, well then, hey, you know, uh, the numbers will proceed to, to go higher with the trend indicator, and that's why the trend indicator is like one of my favorites, because as long as I see the numbers go up higher, I know that the market is trending. But if the numbers stop, then I'm like, uh-oh, you know, what could possibly maybe not be happening right change the picture yeah okay perfect i mean at the end i love to see the market in here just go straight to 30 <laughs> but i don't know if they'll do that on my word to the oh it's getting i you know I tend to think that there's going to be other projects that may 
fly high. I just don't feel like Bitcoin and Ethereum are always going to be the the king and the queen. I think there's multiple technologies being developed right now. So I think we'll see a lot of things happen in the next year. A lot. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and number um, and then number three is going to be that red dot on the TSI. So this is the perfect really what we want to look at because next week when we come to like take a look at this this thing could be at 20 and or 22 we might be just talking about how this thing exploded once it broke the ATR or we can be coming back next week and this thing could be at 1500 and we can be talking about how it failed and then how all these uh clues were able to manifest themselves to give us a warning of how to reposition ourselves. So, so, you know, we are bullish to market and everything is showing that the market is going higher. Um, and But this is a big number up at 1,800. Okay, the, the market doesn't really muck around when it, when it hits the ATR number. Yeah, you know, and the article did say it hit 18, so it did. It did, but look at that candlestick. It literally, like, I'm going to make this big. So, bam, it went there. But the reason, if you're new to trading in general, the candlestick thickness represents the average time it stayed within that time, that price range. It did not stay long to 1800. So, if you had bought in it down here at 15 and you set it to sell at 18, it would have sold. Done. Money made. All right, but it it literally like just almost passed that point, Joe. But you can see that ATR is eighteen oh two, and it hit eighteen hundred. <laughs> oh, so much, so close, so close. So it it surpassed that top counter band. So anybody that would have bought in here and done what I had just described, like set their sell, they just made money. They're happy. Woo! They're getting a pizza tonight. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Money come, uh, huh? Pizza with the with all the toppings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Down a pizza party cool. with the family, exactly. So. Um, all right. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's close. It's close. I think that 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 ATR could flip. We'll see. Yeah. So this is the perfect way, like, to end it. And um, that's what I like to. You know, say if you make the chart just a little bit more tighter, I just want to just show the depth of that again. Yeah, with the writing. There you go. Perfect. That's a great, great work, Susie. Exactly like that. Thanks, Joe. Well, it was so great having you guys here. Sorry about last week. I was quite sick. Much better. And um, I'm looking forward to see what week 51 is, guys. We are in the last two weeks of 2022. So history is being made right now. How will crypto end in 2022? And then the regulatory comes in 2023, as we just saw in the news. So it's uh, crypto is just getting more stable and stable as every every year comes around the corner. So I, I personally do think that there will be some specific coins that have the infrastructure that will be here long term. So I'm also don't want to don't I want you guys to remember that there there is staking rewards out there too where you could get a coin and stake it and just like they have dividends with stocks you know you may want to look into that like what is a stakeable coin where you will be getting residual uh, commissions from just staking it on a very reliable exchange that's the problem these days right <laughs> what exchange is reliable so anyways at the end of the day if, if you keep up with your charts and your technology you'll know which direction to go and which direction not to go in and if you decided to stay in a coin or an asset then you you know what you're doing right because joe you gave us the secret sauce like joe you've given us all the direction on what to do and if you guys know how to read these charts and you don't follow them that's your own fault <laughs> but we have confidence that you you can follow the right thing to do. And we look forward to hearing from you next week to see your successes. Tell us how you're trading and, and if you've actually jumped and done an actual trade because that's what we want to hear from you guys, okay? 
All right. That's it. I've said my piece, Joe. Awesome. Okay. Well, look, have a great uh, week trading and good luck, everyone. Thanks, Thank you. Guys.